So this video is on graph transformations. Um, uh, this is GCSE revision, so there are three types of transformations that we're going to go through that you need to know, and these are the same transformations that you learn at GCSE. So the first transformation is a translation, and this is when we shift the graph by a set value. So there are two types of a translation. There is outside the function translation and inside the function translation. So first of all, let's go through the so-called outside the function. And this is when it's of the form y is equal to f of x, and that's the normal uh, graph, and then plus a on the end. And what this translation does is it adds a to all of the y values. So all the y values have a added to it where a is a constant or another way of saying this to make graph sketching easier is it moves the graph up by a. So uh, let's do an example to illustrate this. Let's say that f of x is equal to x plus 3 x minus 3, so it's a quadratic, and let's sketch the graph y is equal to f of x. So there's going to be a root at minus 3 and 5, and it's going to be a positive quadratic, and the y intercept is going to be a minus 15, so if we sketch it, it's going to look something like this, where, remember to label, this is minus 3, this is 5, and this is minus 15. And this is the graph y is equal to f of x. Now let's draw a translated graph. Let's say that a is equal to 2. So let's sketch the graph y is equal to f of x plus 2. So what we're actually doing is we're adding a to all the y values. So a very good way in order to sketch this graph, to help sketch this graph, is we want to find a set point uh, in which we need to kind of uh, follow, and then the rest is just going to be um, quite easy. Well, as we're adding a to all y values, we can take the y-intercept, remember the y-intercept is just 0, minus 15, and we can um, find the transformed y-intercept by adding 2 to the y-intercept. So the new y-intercept is going to be minus 15 plus 2, which is going to be minus 13. So if we say minus 13 is about here, let's say. So we can now sketch a translated graph. Remember, uh, it moves the graph up by a. So let's sort of um, follow this when we're sketching it. So if we follow this, it's going to look something like this. where the whole graph is moved up by 2 and the new y-intercept here is going to be minus 13. So this is the way that I would sketch um, uh, graph transformations is I would find the y-intercept or the roots depending on which we're um, doing. As we're adding a to all the y-values here I would identify where the new y-intercept is and um, I would sketch it by following that. Now one thing you'll notice as well is that the roots have also changed. The roots have also changed too. Um, I used to think that they'd stay the same as only affecting y, but as you can see on the graph, if we move everything up by 2, what were previously the roots were now going to be at the y equals 2 position and the new roots are going to be uh, where it was before when y was equal to um, when y was equal to minus 2 before. Um, so the previous roots will no longer be at y equals 0 and we have new roots. Now the only way to find these new roots, annoyingly, is just to figure them out from scratch and making y um, equal to um, 0. There's no other way, annoyingly, to do it. You're just going to have to do it from scratch. You're going to have to do it from scratch by knowing the new equation. So remember this over here, y is equal to f of x plus a. This is the new equation down here, y is equal to f of x plus 2. So we can say that new equation is y is equal to, remember that f of x is equal to x plus 3, x minus 5. So we can say y is equal to x plus 3, x minus 5, 
plus 2 on the end. And that is the only difference between um, these two um, graphs, is that there is now a plus 2 on the end. So this was the uh, original uh, graph, y is equal to x plus 3, x minus 5. And this is the new graph of y is equal to x plus 3, x minus 5, and x plus 2. Um, just a note as well, I think it's quite useful, it's because you don't have colours in the exam, to, no, uh, to label your lines. So this is f of x plus 2, and this down here is f is y is equal to um, f of x. Um, using this you can kind of see why the y-intercept uh, goes up by 2 because remember that um, we times these together to get the term for the uh, y-intercept because if we multiply it out that's what it's going to be but now this plus 2 is on the end so that's going to um, add as well and to figure out the roots here you'd have to make y equal to 0 And then you need to solve it again. So not only the only way that you can do this is actually by expanding the brackets. So it would be x squared plus 3x minus 5x would be minus 2x minus 15 plus 2, which is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 13, if we uh, minus 15 plus 2. And this is equal to 0. And then we need to solve um, this. Now, if you just put this into a calculator, you'll find that the x values is uh, when x is equal to 1 plus root 14 and when x is equal to 1 minus root 14. So we can say the new roots, we can say that this root here is going to be 1 minus root 14, as this is the smaller root, and this root here is going to be 1 plus root 14, um, like this. Now, really quick, it is very useful um, to identify, um, to know what the new um, graphs are going to look like. Because sometimes they might present an equation, uh, a question, where they might say, sketch y is equal to x plus 3 x minus 5 and then they might ask in the second part of the question to sketch y is equal to x plus 3 x minus 5 plus 2 they might not use these f of x terms they might not use that when they present the question in this form you need to identify what transformation has occurred so you need to compare the two graphs and if you do that you'll see the only difference is this plus 2 is on the end so therefore you can tell that the two graphs that this one here is going to be this graph but it's just a translation that is applied it's an outside the function translation where it's a plus two on the end and therefore you can sketch the graphs um, by doing this one up here first and then doing the second one by just um, moving the graph or shifting the graph up by two the second type of translation is the so-called insides the function so this is of the form y is equal to f of x plus a, where the plus a is inside the brackets and therefore is so-called inside the function like this. And the effect of this translation is that it minuses a from all x values. Now, this looks quite confusing at first. I always used to always forget this because you would expect it to plus a to all x values because you're plussing a. But what you actually find in general for inside the function transformations, it always has the opposite effect of what you're expecting in terms of um, in terms of what it does. So here it's um, plussing a, but it actually minuses a from all x values. And you just need to remember this trend in general for inside the um, function transformations. Also, for inside the function transformations, it always affects the x values. When it's outside the um, function transformations, it affects the y values. And for outside the function transformations, the effect uh, is what you'd expect it to be in terms of its plus a and then etc, etc. And another way to say this to make graph sketching easier is it moves the graph left by A. So let's do an example. Let's make A equal to 1, let's say, and let's do Y is equal to F of X 
plus 1. And let's sketch this graph. Now before we found the new y-intercept, because it was the y values and that helped us sketch it, now we have the x values. Let's find some x uh, coordinates that we can follow. And we have some x coordinates, we have the roots from the previous graph. So we can use these and find the new roots as minus 3, minus 1, because remember we minus a from all of the x values. It's going to be minus 3 minus 1, which is equal to minus 4, and that's one of the roots. And the other root is 5 minus 1, which is equal to 4, so that's the other root. So we can say that minus 4 is about here, and we'll aim for here, and 4 is about here, so we can aim for here. So if we sketch this, remember it moves the graph left by A, so that's kind of what it's going to look like, that's what we're aiming for. It's going to look something like this here where this here is minus 4 and this here is 4. And remember to label it because that's quite useful for the examiner. y is equal to f of x plus 1. Now, as you might be able to see slightly here, the y-intercept is also going to change. This is just because when you move the graph left by a, it, the y-intercept is just going to change from what it was before. The way you re uh, calculate the new y-intercept, unfortunately, the only way to do it is just to recalculate it from scratch using methods um, described from previous um, videos. Now, in terms of the equation, let's compare our two equations. We have y is equal to f of x, and the other equation is y is equal to f of x plus 1. These are both the same function. The only difference between them is what the function is actually of. This is of f of x, and this is of f of x plus 1. So the function here is the exact same. The only difference is that for this one, x is what the function is of. For this one, x plus 1 is of the function of is what the function is of. So in order to make the equation for this form, what we have to do is replace all the values of x with x plus 1, and that will give us f of x plus 1. So the new equation is going to be y is equal to f of x plus 1, which will be x plus 1 plus 3, and x plus 1 minus 5. This is from this uh, function up here. And we could simplify this to y is equal to x plus 4, x minus 4. And it's quite easy to see why the new roots are 4 and minus 4 um, now. It's also very easy from here to figure out the new y-intercept, because this would just be 4 times minus 4, which is minus 16. So the new y-intercept is going to be um, uh, minus um, 16. So they could ask you to translate more complicated uh, graphs. So they could ask you to translate a cubic, for example. So I've sketched a cubic here, f of x is equal to x plus 3, x plus 1, x minus 1. Uh, I've sketched it already to save time. And let's uh, do the transformation y is equal to f of x plus 5. So we know that the y-intercept is going to be raised by 5 to 2. So we're going to base our sketch around this, and everything is going to be raised by 5. So if we do this, I'm going to... Base, I'm going to start my uh, sketch around the y-intercept because I think that would be easier. If you sketch this, it's going to look something on this side. It's going to look like this. And on this side, it's going to look like this here. And the y-intercept here is going to be 2. Remember to label this as y is equal to f of x plus 5, as we've got two different graphs on the same axis, so we need to label them. And the new equation is going to become y is equal to x plus 3, x plus 1, x minus 1, plus 5. Now, just a quick note, there is a root here, as you can see, um, and I haven't labelled it, and I was kind of debating this in my head when I was making this video, because in order to uh, find this root and label it, what you're going to have to do is equal this to zero and then uh, expand it and then factorize it again uh, or, or simplify it sorry and then you're either going to have to put it into a calculator or even use the methods from chapter seven the thing is this is very long-winded and very long especially when the question isn't actually based around finding roots it's based around uh, transforming graphs now I notice in the uh, book that there's a couple examples of them transforming um, 
cubics and quartics like this and they don't even bother labeling this root again because I think it's a bit too long-winded and complicated to do and in the exam they always kind of find ways around not you having to get in the situation where you have to label a cubic root like this they usually um, will not make you sketch the graph but only translate certain um, points so what I would say personally is if you're in this situation where you need to where you have a root like this a transformed root I wouldn't bother labeling it when it's a cubic or a quartic because it's going to be too long to do, it's going to be too complicated and the question isn't focused around that. Only if it specifically says label the points where the graph crosses the coordinate axis. Although, as I said, I don't think you'll ever be in that situation because the examiners realise this and they always try and, and uh, make the question so you are not put in this situation where you have to label a root like this. Now let's do the transformation y is equal to f of x plus 2, where the plus 2 is inside the brackets. So let's take the roots and base our transformation uh, around this. So the new root is going to be 1 minus 2. Remember, we minus it to get minus 1. One, uh, minus 1, minus 2 to get minus 3, and minus 3, minus 2 to get minus 5. And these are the new roots, minus 1, minus 3, and minus 5. So remember, uh, it's shifted to the left by uh, 2. So if we sketch this, it's going to look something like this here. Remember to label y, this is y is equal to f of x plus 2, and remember to label the axis, this is minus 5, and the new equation is going to be y is equal to x plus 5, remember replace all the values of x of x plus 2, I'm just going to simplify this in my head quickly, x plus 5, x plus 3, x plus 1, and in this example it's very easy to figure out the y-intercept um, as... 15. Um, unlike the roots with the previous, it's very easy to find the y-intercept, so I would just go ahead and label it because it is so easy to find. So they could also ask you to uh, transform reciprocal graphs, so for example h of x is equal to 1 over x, and let's sketch the transformation y is equal to h of x plus 2. I've already sketched the uh, original graph on the uh, axes. So what this is going to do is shift the whole graph up by 2. And the important thing with transforming reciprocal graphs is that the asymptote will also be affected. So the x uh, equals 0 is not going to be affected because if you shift that up it's going to be the same. However, this asymptote here, if you shift this up by 2, it's actually going to be shifted up to here, and it's now going to be equal to y is equal to 2. And this is the new asymptote. And therefore, the only difference uh, between these two graphs is they're the exact same, except it's shifted up by 2, so you can actually follow the asymptote, and you can sketch the translated graph as looking like this here, where it's going to look like this. Remember to label this as y is equal to h x plus 2 and this asymptote as I said is going to stay uh, the same and we can write the new equation as y is equal to 1 over x plus 2 and we've talked about this in the reciprocal graphs video um, about these types of um, transformations already now, as you can see here, there is now a root. Now, because this isn't too complicated to figure out, unlike quartics and cubics, I would um, go ahead and figure... Uh, they would probably expect you to go ahead and figure this out, as it's not too complicated. In fact, they definitely would. So, in order to do, find the root, you just have to equal y equal to um, 0. So, in order to do that, you would just say that uh, 0 is equal to 1 over x plus 2. So, minus 2 is equal to 1 over x. So minus 2x is equal to 1, so x is equal to minus a half. So you can label this root here as minus a half, and it has this uh, equation here. Let's just now quickly do the uh, transformation y is equal to h of x plus 2 with a 2 in the bracket. Now this time the asymptote is affected, but it's going to be the, uh, the other asymptote, where everything is shifted to the left by 2, so this is going to be shifted to the left by 2, so this is going to become x is equal to minus... 2, so we can base our sketches around this, where this is going to be like this, and this is going to be here like this, um, and this asymptote is just going to stay the same. Um, and remember to label uh, that this is uh, y is equal to h of x plus 2, and then bracket. 
Um, and now we have a y-intercept, uh, which we can figure out if we write the equation, which is going to be y is equal to x plus 2 under 1. Remember, we replace x plus 2 with x, so y is equal to 1 over x plus 2. And if we make x equal to 0, we can find the y-intercept, so it's going to be y is equal to a half. So this y-intercept here is going to be a half, and it's going to have this uh, equation.